Okay, we're good. All right. So welcome to the January 7th Chaos Common Working Group meeting. I think I missed the last meeting. Um, yeah. So I kind of threw together a very generic agenda, but if there's other stuff people want to talk about or if somebody else wants to wants to drive this based on what we did last week, um, that's that's totally cool. I'm a little bit out of the loop. Well, even our or even our last week was last month. I know. <laughs> <laughs> last year. <laughs> uh, yeah, I took three weeks of holiday. Um, and it was amazing, but I feel like I've, I'm coming back and I've just forgotten everything. I have no idea what's going on. Kind of the same. I didn't look at the last um, meetings minutes. No, I wasn't even in the last meeting. So kind of looking at it, it looks like we spent some time um on you see on the top of page two there was time between review cycles and time waiting for submitter action so this is the time between review cycles was one that daniel had brought up if i recall and I think we're getting some pretty good resolution on it. I think it was a little confusing as to what that meant, but I think the narrative is starting to play out pretty well. So that's that's that. I mean, that's that's one thing that we took a look at in the last meeting. I don't know if we, the time waiting for submitter action, how much time we actually spent on that in the last meeting. So that's all I've got. Okay. Are either of these ones that people want to talk about today? I would love to sure. talk about the time between review cycles because I think we're pretty close to closure on that, if I recall. And then the only other thing that I was thinking about this morning with respect to common and the agenda is um, maybe this year thinking about how the common metrics are being um, kind of played out in the other working groups and try to, you know, like make those connections a little bit more explicit because I, I, they're certainly there. There's no doubt about yeah. it, but working to just really highlight that work as it's being consumed or used in the other working groups. Cool. Yeah, that sounds good. Do you want to add that as an agenda item or do you want to just yeah. like be something to think no, about or? No, I would certainly like to do that because I think it's something that might we might want to think about kind of systematically. Yep. Okay. Anything else that anybody wants to add to the agenda before we get started? Okay. Um, so do we want to start with the open issues and PRs? It looks like we don't have any PRs. Sorry, and I'm not signed into GitHub. And I need to get my auth code here. Somebody want to start that while I get logged in. Yep. So um, I can share my screen real quickly. Perfect. So here's the current set of issues in common. You can see that two of the seven issues are with related to the release. So technical forks and mm -hmm. just the release notes. Um, I'm guessing that this number 89 right here, the time between review cycles, <laughs> we've gotten all this, like the naming of the, that's the other thing we did. We got the naming of the issue squared away with the naming of the metric, just so we could get all of these things aligned. Cause I think the name had changed so many different times. 
Um, so obviously this one is something that I think we can take care of today. Cool. Um, particularly with getting this metric done. And honestly, the rest are just really new metric proposals for common. So I, I'm guessing these issues can kind of be taken care of as we develop the metrics, associated metrics, or decide not to um, with each one of these issues. So I don't know that there's much to do with this list today, at least at the moment. Cool. Given that you're already sharing your screen and you wanted to talk about the time between review cycles, do you want to yeah. just do that one first? You bet. Oh, wait, we have a different title. Dang. <laughs> I just claimed that it was. <laughs> Just claimed that it was all the same. <clears throat> so um, Elizabeth and John, Vinod, whoever was on that call last time, I think really what, what this comes down to is kind of like a, um, an academic paper so as you would submit, what's the time between that submission and you know, any changes that are requested where it kind of comes back to the, to the author, right? So how long is that time? And there may be things in between there, but we're just trying to, that's what a review cycle is here. So I would issue a PR, Don, you would talk about it. Other people would chime in on the PR. Um, and then the time between me then submitting a revision to that. So that's, that's what we're talking about here. Do I remember that right, Elizabeth? Yeah, I think we actually ended up with <laughs> review cycle duration because it seemed like that oh. was a little clearer than time between review, okay. if I recall. <laughs> Sorry. I have to watch the video. The yeah, the time between I think was confusing because it was like, is that from when, you know, one oh, whole right. cycle starts to the next cycle or and is it that, you know, so it's a little bit um, confusing. So I think that's where we landed last time. Okay. And down in the implementation, um, I think we uh, sorted it out a little further, how to calculate that. So is this, hello everybody. Hi everyone. Hi Nicole. <laughs> Hi. So is this how quickly, um, a pull request is responded to. Is that what we're talking about? No, um, but that's part of it. So it would be Sean, again, Elizabeth, tell me if I'm wrong, but it would be somebody submitting a PR. Okay. And there's, there's certainly a response to that PR. Um, and there's conversation about that particular PR, even after the first response. Gotcha, and okay. So then the, the time that we're looking at here is how long does it take for Sean to submit a revision Got to it. that first okay. PR based on the conversation? Okay. And I think the, okay. Reason it's, the reason it's framed this way is because you can have within a single PR, multiple review cycles. So I get, I get feedback, I make some changes, and then I, you know, add some more commits or whatever to address some of those changes. And then people will provide more feedback and maybe that wasn't quite right. And then I need to submit some more commits. So it's this multiple, you know, and really complex code, you do get this, you get this multiple review cycles within a single PR. Okay, oh, that's super helpful, thank you. Because when I first, just coming from a, at this point an outsider's standpoint, um, when I saw review cycles, it made me think of, you know how, um, I'll just take OpenStack for example, how it, it, the project re releases twice a year or you know, in the spring and the fall or what have you. Um, it made me think of like the time between the, like, you know, Mataka and what would that have been? But right between those reviews. Anyway. Oh, like release cycles, I think is what you mean. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
can we then use a count also for, as a filter or maybe like in a pull request, how many review cycles are there? So if somebody creates a pull request and there are three or five or 10 review cycles to measure the complexity of that particular pull request or a code submission. I think that's interesting, but I, I would say that's a different metric. Yes. Because one is the duration of the review cycles, and then the other one is how many yeah, review yeah. cycles you typically have. I see those as separate. Uh, yes. Okay. I also uh, just to note, I changed the title of this document and I changed the title of the issue to be review cycle duration so that we can stay consistent since you guys made Thank you while I for was my out. earlier claims that we were consistent. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd make that claim true retroactively. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> so Vinod, I, I agree with Don. Maybe could you add the review cycle count or something like that yeah. to, to the minutes and maybe to the tracking spreadsheet? Again, thinking academic paper wise, those are two things that do get reported differently. Right. So it's actually not the review cycle duration, it's how long it's been in review is one thing that gets reported in academic papers. And then I know these aren't academic papers. And then the other is how many times it went, how many times it actually went through that. So. Yeah. All right. Um, so do you want to, Don, do you want to take maybe five minutes for all of us to read it? I think it's pretty close at this point. Um, or do you just want to kind of take it as is and use the community review period as a time that we could make changes? Because we could move it out of this stage and into... Um, I'll leave that up to you because I haven't, I haven't read this one yet because I think you worked on it while I was out. Um, yeah. if, you think, if you think it's close enough to just submit, let's just, let's just submit it and use the review process. If you want more feedback, I'd be happy to read through it and provide more feedback. Um, um, maybe in that case, just with the two, four, six people who are on here, could we take five minutes and just give it a read real quickly and see if there's any like glaring issue. And if there's not, then um i'll start the process to get it into so i'll put this in the chat here yeah i think we need to resolve the few comments that are lingering out there
So is the review cycle really a release cycle? As I read this metric, or are we looking at the granularity of individual reviews as we define them, i.e. pull requests or merge requests? I think it's the latter. <coughs> Because the description doesn't really communicate the latter. And the description communicates the former. And it's, uh, <clears throat> it's really the last, last line where it says uh, the duration of a review cycle or the time between each new version of the source code is the basis of this metric. So everything about so, this description. Yeah, so yeah. Everything or just that last sentence? <clears throat> that last sentence is the only thing that's not consistent with the latter, which is that okay. it's the time between reviews of a, of a re submitted review, i.e. pull request or merge request or change request. <clears throat> See, to me, that last sentence is is the bit that actually gets at Maybe I'm just misunderstanding what you're saying, Sean. But that last sentence is the only bit that makes that clear. Like, I feel like the first, some of this is a bit rambly. I feel like this is kind of the meat of the description. But it sounds like you're saying that you think that the, this part of the description isn't relevant. But did I misunderstand that? I'm saying, I'm saying that like, uh, I wasn't, I'm trying to figure out what this metric is supposed to measure. And those the, that sentence is inconsistent with the rest of it. And I think Matt said that it is indeed the time between reviews of an individual pull request, merge request. And is that right, Matt? Yeah, so I changed the last sentence. It's probably the word yeah. version that got. It was, it was the source code included in a review. If this is what you're saying. No, that doesn't make any sense to me. The inner review part? Yeah. Yeah. So, but I guess. Because the, the way I think of it is I, I submit a pull request. It's got some, it's got some code in it. Right. And you look at it and you're like, oh, well, you know, if you did this better, it would be a lot more efficient. And Matt comes back and he says, oh, and this in this other bit, if you do this, it would be, you know, more consistent with our coding style or whatever. And then I submit a, a new version. So I submit some commits that fix both of those. Right. And that's what I see as the, the duration of the review cycle. I submitted a thing. I got feedback from a couple of people. I submitted a new thing. And that's what I think the duration should be is I submitted a thing and then I submitted a new thing, which so, is me what this last sentence says. So are we talking about individual change requests or software releases? Neither. So change request is how we define a pull request. I, that's what I thought that it would be based on each change request. But within that change request are a bunch of different changes and iterations. And then at the end of it, you do have technically a new version of the software because something has been changed, but it might not be like a major software release. Is that right. correct? Correct. Like it might not be a tag release. It might not be any release. I mean, it might, it might be a collection of things that eventually goes into a release. Like I think if we talk about releases, that muddies the water because different thing, different different projects. Like like Kubernetes does a release every what? Yeah. Four months, and a whole bunch <clears throat> of stuff gets included. And and the we're using the word review in a way that then that we not we don't use that word anymore. We call it a change request. But the, my point, my point is, it's not a single change request. It's multiple potential change requests. So you requested a change, Matt requested a change, and the review cycle is the period of time it takes me from the individual, like the first thing that I submitted, and the thing that I submitted that has some fixes in it 
that came out as a part of feedback as a part of changes. But th that review cycle could have 10 change requests in it. But it's not a release. No. A release can have like multiple pull requests. Yeah. 10 pull requests. Uh, a release can be a combination of even 100 pull requests. But this is, but we're not talking about a release. No, it's no. nothing to do with a release. This is about, about one single contribution in a form of a pull request. <clears throat> yeah, we're talking about the multiple resubmits that happen in a, in a pull request. In an individual pull request. In an individual pull yeah. request. <clears throat> yes. I feel Presumably. like in, in simple projects, this doesn't happen as often, right? In simple projects, there might be one review cycle, or maybe it just gets merged and there's no real like formal review cycle because there, there are no changes required. But if you look at like Kubernetes, if I refactor a big chunk of code, that's going to be a bunch of different review cycles because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get feedback from some people. I'm going to resubmit something. There's going to be more feedback. I'm going to resubmit. It's going to be more feedback. And I'm going to continue to add commits to this. And I think it's the time between commits that we're looking at as this review cycle duration. How does a, how do a collection of change requests get identified as being part of the review cycle? I don't understand the question. Well, the example was that there'd be multiple change requests that go through iterations? Yes. And that that would be part of a release cycle, but it's not a release. Okay, so this has maybe, When you say change request, I feel like maybe you mean something very specific that request, I maybe yeah. don't understand. Pull request. Pull request. Yeah. The only, the reason Don, we use change request is because PR was, to GitHub, yeah. Uh, we so we made that change. That's all. So it, yeah, it does sound like there's some. Okay, confounding. so this is not multiple change requests. This is one change request within one change request. How many times it gets reviewed and re submitted, uh, submitted yeah. or changed or anything? So this is so with change request cycle duration. Be consistent with the language we're using for what these things so, are throughout the projects, throughout the metric, or the rest of the metric. No, because it's not, it's not necessarily, I feel like we're getting caught up in the difference between GitHub and GitLab here, but it doesn't even necessarily have to be, I mean, this could be, this could be a review on a mailing list, right? I mean, like this could be like, you look at the Linux kernel, this is like patches getting submitted to the mailing list. So I feel okay. like we're getting caught up in terminology and I think we're, Okay, so review, it's a review, but it's not just related. To, it is related to a single change request, but it's about review content that exists in a lot of places. Is this what, how long does it take to resubmit after you've gotten feedback? Uh, can I time in here? Because what I've felt is attending all the different groups, I realized that, okay, for review in, all other uh, groups, we are using the terminology change request, uh, which uh, represents GitHub, GitLab everywhere, so that any change or even a pull request is represented by change request. Mm -hmm. So if we are thinking in that terms, then I would just propose that here, instead of using the word review, we should use the change request. Because but, it's not a, but it's not a change request. That's, that's my point. Yeah. This is where I think Sean is, I think we're talking past each other. Um, because this is not about the change request. This is about the multiple submits that you have to do to get something right, mm -hmm. um, which in, in, I guess in GitLab terminology would happen within a change request. And then you'd have these multiple, multiple cycles. So I, let's use GitHub terminology for just a minute because I think that's easier for people to understand um, because I, I rarely use GitLab. So I submit, I submit a pull request. It's got some code in it. All right. And Sean takes a look at it and is like, nope, that bit's wrong. Matt's like, nope, that bit's wrong. 
and then I fix it and I submit, I add more commits to this pull request. And what we're talking about here, the review cycle duration is the time between that original pull request where I had original commits and the time that it takes me to submit a second batch of commits that fix the things that people asked me to fix. So people yes. did reviews on my code that was originally submitted and then I submit more commits that fix the things that were in the reviews. So then the name can be review cycle uh, of a change request. Review cycle duration of a change request will be more clarity here. So hold on, before we talk about changing the name, Sean, did that, did Don's description help? Yeah, it, no, I mean, I, I get it. Um, I just don't know why we're calling it a review cycle and not a change request cycle. Because these are the review cycles that happen within a change request cycle. Yes. Because a change request cycle would be the duration that, uh, let's call it a pull request, the duration that a pull request is open, right? right? So that's the duration of the change request. So if you look at the change request, that's the duration of time that the pull request is open. But within that pull request, there may be multiple review cycles. Right. Because people resubmit their code. And so you have you have a change request or a pull request. And then you have in, in GitHub, it's you do a review on it. Right. And you have multiple people do reviews. And then you end that review cycle by incorporating your changes back into the pull request. But, but the review cycle exists within a specific Change. pull request in that case. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I mean, review, I, I just, I want, I mean, my only, I think I was confused about what this metric was because it seemed disconnected from change requests or pull requests, but it's also entirely about change requests or pull requests. So, Simply calling it review cycle duration made it unclear to me what we were talking about. That's what I got stuck on. Mm -hmm. Minad's made a change, I think it was Minad, or Anonymous Fox anyway. Review cycle duration within a change request. I did that. That makes it more clear to me that, okay, this is something about yeah. change requests and the, the cycles that happen within change requests. And that I understand, like there are multiple review cycles. Yes. Uh, like. The first time I submit a pull request in Augur, it's unlikely that it will be accepted. I get reviews and then I make changes and then that usually goes on three or four times. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think that's what we're talking about. Yeah. So it, it is more clear to me with the change in the title there. And then that last sentence caused me some confusion as well somebody else, maybe anonymous Fox already fixed that. I just changed version to iteration just because version is obviously kind of a important term. Sorry. Micro. Call me a fresh set of eyes that's trying to figure out how I'm going to write this metric in code. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what it's a metric of. And now, I, now it's more clear to me. I have a quick question. Um, so will we measure um, the av average of this duration mm -hmm. across all pull requests for a, for our repo, for a project, whatever? Um, will we take the average or how, so, like, I'm not sure how we're gonna pull that information. Yeah, so this will be for one particular uh, review cycle. And if we look across all the review cycles, we can take the average very easily. Like if we have all the review cycles duration, we can easily take out the average of that. And but I think uh, right now the focus is on the duration, calculating the duration of a one particular review cycle. Yeah, and you can see that down in the filter section. I think that's a little bit more clear where it talks about you can do an average or median duration and you could potentially filter it by a whole bunch of different things. Yes. Awesome, that's perfect, thanks.
so do we feel like the description is clear to people for what this what this really means I feel like the description is kind of wordy. <clears throat> yeah, it is. Gave me a lot of things to get tripped up on. Was it the second sentence, Don? That like first three sentences are more of a like telling a story rather than describing it. Yeah, well, I feel like the first sentence is good because I think it gets at the fact that there are one or more review cycles within a change request. So I think I think that is good. I think this introduces a bunch of stuff that is um, maybe peripheral to, mm -hmm. to the metric itself. Um, and this sentence, I think, is just unclear. Well, let's try. So I don't like it, but I'm not sure how to fix it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Well, Which what if we, just these helpful. two sentences were there? I mean. What page are you on, Don? Do you want to share your screen again, Matt? That might be easier. You bet. This right here. The description, Sean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see a change request is based on more review cycles, duration of review cycle, the time between each new iteration of contributor contribution is the basis of this metric. What I feel like it's missing is something about how multiple people can provide feedback. And, and I do think it would benefit from making the fact that it's about a single change fellow. I guess that's in the sentence about never mind. The question handles that. Reviews change request is based on. I don't think um, we can combine these two things. Yeah, no, I would have to get rid of the word cycles here. Yeah, and that's the important bit. Hmm. Yep. But um, I think maybe we could just full stop this and then continue with the thought. And a review cycle. More reviewers. Feedback. On a, on a proposed contribution. Yeah. Change, something like that. Contribution, maybe. I would say contribution. Okay. Is the to the author needed? The, the contributor. I would just say provide feedback on. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> it's implied yeah. in there. Yeah. Okay. I like this version. Yeah. If we get rid of the bits that you suggested to delete. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That's much more clear. How's that? Well, it took us a while, but we got there. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I always approach this looking at, okay, how do I, what, what data am I gonna go get and how am I gonna measure it? And that's where my little micro annoyance questions come from, so sorry. No, no, no and I think that was perfect. It, it caused us to tighten up the description so that people actually can understand what it means. Because if mm -hmm. 
if you're confused about what it might mean, then I don't think we're helping anybody by releasing the metric. If we're not going to get a lot of software. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oops. Yeah, I liked your change. That looks okay. good. Cool. I basically proposed deleting the bit that Matt Snell said that he's not sure what that means. Cause I looked at it and I didn't know and it didn't seem to add anything. Okay. Oops, I should have just. Sean, do these align with? Yeah, no, no, it makes here. perfect. I get it now. So, okay. We should have come down here and read the implementation because I think that would have made it easier for us to rewrite the description because I feel like that bit's really clear. Do you agree, Sean, as the, yeah, the implementation people? Okay. Yeah, no, th this makes it very clear. <clears throat> Can someone change the name in the issue? Because we are revising the name again. Here? Yeah. Sure. I'll do that. I've got it. I'll change it in the, in the doc too. I've already changed it in the doc. Added to the... So Sean, does Augur do this much, currently? This is much easier to understand. What do you think of Sean? What do you think of Matt's comment here about more context? I'm looking at it. Okay. I mean, I don't know, I guess the general comment, the, I mean, the statement is general. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I mean, visualizations we usually handle with examples. Um, I don't really see the visualization that's in there as reflecting this metric in any way. This is like granular data, isn't it? This data or the data that would be the, yeah the data in the graphic or is that are those actual um, review cycle mile markers? It's not what they look like. Well, I'm guessing it's off of this like patch set one. Oh right, that, yeah. that would be the that would be the marker. Uh, yeah. So it is, yeah, it's it's more granular data. Um, I feel like this is less a visualization and yeah. more of an example of the data. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. Yeah. Okay. I guess um, not. Matt's comment, I mean, Matt, that's so. just a very general, Matt's comment is also a very general statement about visualizations. I mean, I think we, right now we don't have any visualizations in this, in this metric. It would be, more accurate to just leave the section out at this juncture or to try to come up with one. Would you want to capture, Don, what you had said that this is 
not necessarily a visualization of the metric, but a visualization of the data that could be used yeah. to provide the metric? Or is that <laughs> focusing on that patch set? Like somewhere in the world, somebody uh, said, I'm uploading a patch set. That those are markers that indicate the um, iteration is completed and is a new one. I almost feel like we should just delete this section until we actually have an implementation of this metric. I also okay. think that mentioning that Grimoire Lab has the data but doesn't provide the metric is means that it doesn't actually provide the metric. Yeah. I mean, Augur has the data probably that you could use. Oh yeah, yeah. Too, like, but it doesn't yeah. have this metric, so I, right. I almost think we should just get rid of those two sections. Yeah. Or, or we could put it down into references if we wanted to just like a memory jog of like, oh yeah, that's what we meant. But yeah, or take them out. I mean, I think, I think having uh, them in there is confusing. I mean, I think we can iterate and provide visualizations later. I don't know that we've ever said that those are necessary for releasing a metric. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah. I think this will be more common actually as we as we release metric definitions for things that we haven't already implemented. Yeah. I think that this realistically could become the, the norm once, once we've defined a lot of the stuff that we've already implemented. And yeah. then we can create a visualization for it after someone's implemented it. Uh, is this your point, Elizabeth? Like maybe just even capturing? Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah, I think that's enough. Just to, just for another piece of context and <clears throat> for our discussion here, I think it's enough. I think that's good. Is, okay. What is this example? Yeah, I was just clicking on that too. <laughs> I What do you think? I don't think that that link has anything to do with the metric that we just talked about. Okay. Yeah. Um hard to have uh, it's an interesting link. I just have no idea. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think this looks good. Aside from the fact all that right. I'm just trying to scroll up on your screen, which doesn't work. I do that all, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, in the notes, we can put an action item that I'll get this in as a metric for review. Yeah, perfect. Before, before the next meeting. You can do that or you want me to? I'll do it. I got it. Um. And with that, we're we're pretty much out of out of time. Um, the next for the next meeting, are there are there some specific things that we wanted to review? Like do we want to do a deep dive on the time waiting for submitter action? Which was one of the other ones that you did last last time? Yeah, I don't seem to recall what the status of that one is. Okay, so let's look at looking, it. Next week. Yeah, looking at it at least just real quickly, it seems a little rougher than what we just had. Okay. So I'll just add that. I'll add that to the agenda. Okay. For the twenty first. Let's make sure I don't have any conflicts and see if we need anybody else to run the meeting. Super not organized for this today. No, I think we should be good. Okay. Our next two weeks. Um, yeah. And I'll add that process for how we identify the common metrics because we didn't get to that. We sort of stayed on the um, on this metric. Totally cool. Okay, is there anything else we want to add to the agenda for the 21st? I just added it to the top of the notes.
Looks good. No. No, that looks good. Cool. Well, thanks everybody. I feel like we, we got a lot accomplished. Yeah, did. Uh, very good mood, good meeting. Well done. And today should yeah. be a calm, calmer day than yesterday. So <laughs> and, um, yeah. never turn the muse on over my mic again. <laughs> Big mistake. But like shooting Big heroin. Mistake. I just shoot a little bit to get me through the rest of the day. <laughs> oh. Thanks, everyone. Oh. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.